Island of Solo's fastest steam locomotives. They take passengers from Sodor to the mainland and back again. They always love to race and Caitlin Light usually wins. One day, the two engines stopped at Knapford Station. Gordon was there with the Express. Thomas was there with Annie and Clarabel. And James was there as well. Pulling a long train of freight cars needed to be taken to the quarry. He was most upset. It's not fair, he complained. Why do you all get to pull passenger trains and I'm stuck with stupid old troublesome trucks? The freight cars felt insulted. Pay him back! Pay him back! Pay him back! They giggled. They were cross with James and decided to play a trick on him. Oh, please stop the whining, huffed Gordon. I've honestly had enough of it. Soon, the guard's whistle blew and Connor left first to go to the mainland. Caitlin later had to go to the mainland, but had to go to Wellsworth first. Goodbye, Caitlin, said Connor. See you later. And Connor puffed quickly away. Bye, called Caitlin. Next, it was James's turn to leave the station. He puffed crossly away. He puffed snootily down the line. You silly freight cars make my splendid outlook look ridiculous, puffed James. I'm very discomforted by having to pull the likes of you. Freak cars grew cross still. James didn't realize that he was setting himself up for trouble. Meanwhile, Caitlin zoomed along the line. She went faster and faster. Whee! she exclaimed. She loved going this fast. Meanwhile, James was still making his journey towards the quarry. As he puffed down the line, he neared under the two viaduct bridges which were on the counter and Caitlin's main line. This was a chance for the freight cars to cause a great deal of trouble. On, 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 they cried. Throw him off the line, said another. As James went around a sharp curve, the freight cars threw him off the line. James and some freight cars hit one of the support beams of the bridge. The bridge creaked and it groaned. Meanwhile, at the work slash the Soda Search and Rescue Center, the alarm went off. James is off the line, cried Hawk Rocky. He hit one of the lower support beams of the one of the blue bridges. Caitlin is on her way. All traffic could be halted except for her. There may be a potential accident. We must go and help her now. Bell and Harvey went straight to work. Harvey went straight to work, trying to clear some of the freight cars away. Meanwhile, Bell raced to Napford Station. Bell bustled in. When Caitlin stops here, I must warn her about the Blue Bridge. It's falling apart. James had an accident, and he's knocked down one of the support beams, she cried. Oh no, exclaimed Thomas. Caitlin isn't stopping here next. She's headed straight to the Blue Bridge. We 
can't tell her. She's not going to stop in time. Botheration, cried Bill. What do we do? Then the fat controller stepped out of his office. He was aware of the dilemma. You will just have to catch her, Bill, said Caitlin. You'll just have to do, be as fast as you can to catch up with her. If she makes it to the broken part, you could possibly pull her to safety. Belle got into position, waiting for Caitlin to pass by. Caitlin, look at the past Belle! Belle quickly went after her. Belle whistled and hooted and hollered and wailed to try to stop Caitlin, but she wouldn't stop. She was going too fast to hear poor Belle behind her. She then neared the broken bridge. As Harvey tried to get James out from under the bridge, the bridge creaked and it croaked and it groaned some more. Harvey didn't realize that James was the only thing there keeping the bridge upright. With one final heave, Harvey was able to shove James out from under the bridge. The tracks buckled and snapped, and they finally came apart. The support beam couldn't bear any more weight. It was on thin edge from falling. Then came Caitlin. No, Caitlin, please stop, cried Belle. Caitlin finally heard Belle and slowed down. But it was too late to stop now. Oh no, cried Caitlin. She applied her brakes, but it was too late. She crashed into the bridge. The bridge creaked and it croaked and it finally came out of balance. Help us! The passengers wailed. They were in a great shock of awe. Belle buffered up behind Caitlin ever so gently. Belle heaved and she hoed. And she was able to get Caitlin back on track. The passengers, Belle, Caitlin, James and Harvey, all had a great sigh of relief. But then, Caitlin heard a familiar whistle. Oh no, she cried. There was Connor coming back from the mainland. He was headed right towards the bridge. Connor, stop! cried Caitlin. Caitlin, Belle, Harvey, and James whistled and hooted as loud as they could. Connor couldn't stop in time. Ah! Uh, he cried as he replied his brakes as he inched onto the bridge. Ah! Uh, Connor crashed to the ground below, but the passengers were still okay. But on the tip of the bridge, they were about to fall. Just then, Hero bustled in. I saw Connor coming down the line, he said. I knew he was headed toward the bridge. I came to see if I could help, and as I can see, I must help his passengers. Hero carefully buffered up to Connor's coach and hold it safely away. Then, the bridge that Caitlin and Belle were on started to wobble and shake. The impact of the collapse was leading on it and loosened the supports. We must get off the bridge! cried Belle. The two chuffed carefully and quickly off the bridge. Just in time.
The bridge was in smithereens. Luckily, the passengers were all safe, including Caitlin and Bill. But Connor and James were the most damaged of all. A few weeks later, the freight cars were cleared away and Jenny Packard's construction crew went straight to work repairing the bridge. Connor and James were going to be in the steamworks for a long time. Lots of repairs needed to be done on them, and lots of money needed to be spent. One evening, Caitlin was talking with Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, she said, will you get an engine to help me with the mainland passengers? There are just too many for me to handle by myself. Don't worry, Caitlin. I've already ordered another engine f to come from England to help you here while Cora's in repairs. He should be here any time soon. Thank you, sir, said Caitlin, and she puffed away. As Caitlin puffed back to England for the night, she wondered who would be the engine to help her with her duties. And the whole time, she th she kept hoping that the engine would be nice. 